guys, in this box we have the most exciting product that I've ever had from Banggood. So exciting in fact that I've actually had a quick peek at it before doing the unboxing video, something that I've never done before. So at the first glance it just looks like another crawler kit but this one has something very special and I will show you more in a minute. So in the box you get the built up rolling chassis, you've got to fit all the electrics and the wheels and the body and all that stuff and this thing here guys, the whole thing is entirely carbon fibre and aluminium. I mean the only plastic I can find on it is a couple of links on the steering but even the suspension links are made out of fully metal. So it comes with an option of two different bumpers, we can have a look at more of that in a minute. Side guards, battery straps, pinion gear, body posts and the split rim alloy wheels and we're gonna have to assemble these. And I haven't showed you yet what I'm most excited at and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So stuff you're gonna need to complete this car is a servo and I'm gonna put a link down below where you can get all this stuff from. And also there's going to be a link below where you can get this from. I'm not going to call it dirt cheap, it's actually quite expensive, but it's expensive for good reason. So I'll just let's check the link down below. You can see all the techno babble there, you can see all the specifications, and you can see where you can get it from as well. So servo wise, I'm going to run it on this KS servo here. I've been using these for a little while now. It's the same servo that I use in my Traxxas TRX4, and I've so far had really good results, although I have killed one now. But these are so cheap, it doesn't really matter. There's loads of torque, 20 kilos of torque. They're pretty fast, full metal geared. I mean, for, for the price of what they are, you could buy a few of these and have them as spares. And the motor and speed controller combo, I'm going with this 540-55 turn motor and a free cell LiPo speed controller. These are also crazy dirt cheap. I think they're like $20, something like that. So I'm gonna put a link to that down below. And I've used these before as well with good results. Battery wise, we've got two batteries here. We've got a couple of Zot powers, both free cell. This one here is a bit bigger and it fits in the battery compartment perfectly. Radio wise, the Dumbo RC would be perfect because it's dirt cheap and it's also a really good radio. But I've got a Spectrum radio here that I took out of one of my armor cars because these are actually a little bit slow in response. Response. But for a crawler, that doesn't matter. So rather than to bin it, I may as well repurpose it onto a crawler. So if any of you guys have got an Armour RC car that comes with one of these radios, I recommend you take it off the car and you use something like this, a Dumbo RC. I'm going to put a link to this down below. Or if you haven't got a radio at all, then also, guys, go for the Dumbo on this because, guys, it's just crazy cheap. And it's actually the same radio that I use on my 100 mile an hour RC car. That's how good it is. So link to all of this stuff down below. So now for the part that I'm super excited about. I mean, first of all, we got the carbon fiber and the aluminium. So that's cool in itself. But if we turn this thing underneath, Let's check out the axles, guys. These are actually portal axles, the same kind of design that comes with a Traxxas TRX-6 or Traxxas TRX-4. Basically, what a portal axle is, is when it, where you've got the center line of the actual axle itself, on a normal axle, the wheel bolts on in the center. On the portal axles, you've got a series of gears inside these portal boxes here, and that brings the drive down, which means that the wheel is actually off-centered from the center of the axle, giving you a lot more ground clearance. So if we have a look at the axles on this Traxxas TRX-6, just check out that ground clearance, guys. I can still get a finger in between the differential and these tapes. And if we compare that to a car without portal axles, look at that, guys. It doesn't even fit underneath there at all. And portal axles is only really something that comes with a lot higher end stuff, you know, like the Traxxas TRX4, and even, well, it's the TRX6, or even the Mercedes G-Wagon 4x4 squared, the most expensive one comes with portal axles. Check out this bumper. I mean, this really is something fairly substantial. I've left the other one in the packet because I'm probably not going to be using this one just yet. I might use it in future. So to start off with, we've got to fit the rims to the wheels. So I've already done three of them here, look, just to get some practice in because they're a bit fiddly. So I'll show you how to do this one and then we're going to carry on with the rest of the build. So we're going to put some Loctite onto all the screws because we don't want them to come loose. And first we have to install these little screws into the centre here. Now these don't really do anything, they're just there for show. And then next, we've got to install the beadlock ring. So next, we've got to install this outer beadlock into the actual wheel itself. And this is a part that is actually quite fiddly, and I'm not going to bother filming it all, because you lot will be long gone if I do that. But basically, you've got to get it in there like that, and you have to make sure, while you're doing that, that the bead 
stays inside the wheel. It's very easy for it to pop out like this look. You've got to make sure it's actually seated where the bead's supposed to sit on both sides. And then, while that's in there, you get these screws here and put them into the four corners here and then tighten them down. But you've got to make sure as you go around that the bead actually stays in there. So now what I'm doing here, I'm going around here and just doing these up bit by bit, just a tiny bit of a turn at a time, because you want that bead to see evenly all the way around. If you just pinch it up on one side, you're gonna run the risk of it all popping out and also maybe even bending the rim. Boom! So next we've got to fit the inner hub and they're supposed to go on the inside here, so you've got the offset going onto the inside, but you could, if you wanted to, mount this on the outside and run the wheels that way around. Then you've got this massive deep dish. So that may be something that we might try in a future video, but for now we're gonna stick it on the side that it's supposed to go on. Now, unfortunately, my kit didn't come with enough screws to put the hubs on, so I'm gonna have to find some. And luckily, I have a whole entire selection here. Guys, that's looking pretty cool. So next, I'm gonna go around this whole car, remove all of the screws, because I think there's no Loctite on there anywhere. Put some Loctite on there and then put them back in because otherwise it's just going to rattle itself to pieces when we're out having fun. So just while I've got these screws out of here, let's have a little look to see what's inside these portal boxes. So we've got a couple of steel gears, all ball bearings and guys, it looks really well machined all of it. Actually, the whole entire car looks really well machined. Let's have a look at this cover here, look. Just the attention to detail on this thing is insane. And when you turn the transmission, it just feels super smooth. So now I'm gonna fit the servo. Now one thing I wanna change is that when we have a look at the caster angle on the front, it's actually tipping forward. That's something that somebody pointed me out to me on that crawler over there. And it probably doesn't really matter on a crawler, but um, I'm just gonna be picky and I wanna set the caster just going back a little bit. Cause you never know, we might put a crazy fast motor in there and make it go fast and that's gonna make it handle funny. Uh, but before we can do that, we actually have to move the servo up because otherwise, where this arm bolts on here, if we turn this caster angle round, this is going to start hitting on this bar here. So we need to raise the servo up slightly to stop that from happening. So I'm just going to stick a couple of spaces on top of here, raise up this plate, bolt it all on, and hopefully it's going to work. So there we go, we've got the spaces under there. Hopefully that's enough, but we can always add some more. And then we're just going to temporarily just put this servo arm onto the servo because once we come to powering it all up, we're probably going to have to centre it anyway. So now all that we've got to do to change the caster angle is take this screw out of the knuckle thingamajig here. Oh, not on the end of it. Slide him off and just reposition it to the desired angle. So if we look here, it's actually on a spline, so you can actually set it to any angle that you like. That is a very clever design. Boom. So now, as you can see, we've got the caster angle facing that way, which is gonna make it better. Boom. Got the caster set on both sides now. I've also done the rear now, because the rears were facing back a little bit. And we've got a perfect geometry here for the steering links. So those spacers there were a perfect guess. But can you see, without them spacers, it would have probably hit this bar here. Guys, I've just noticed something else really epic about this kit. And it's the first time I've actually seen this in any RC car. So I just took this bolt out the top of the kingpin here, and it's actually supported by a proper ball bearing, when normally there's like some sort of a top hat that's stuff that's shoved in there. So this actually, guys, I mean, I'm really impressed. I'm getting more and more impressed with this car, the more that I'm working on it. So next we've got to fit the motor, and by the looks of it, it's gonna be easier just to remove this center transmission, get the motor in, and then put it back in. And also, we're gonna get a better look at it, and we can also get these screws and put some Loctite on there. Now guys, as I said before, the more I'm looking at this car, the more I'm liking it, and I think, I'm gonna do a whole upgrade series on it. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. So what I've got planned so far, just what I'm thinking, is put another front axle onto the rear, if I can get hold of one, make it four wheel steering. I'd be very tempted to fit a hobby wing axe system into here, brushless combo. And then I've just received some of these little plates here. So these are from Banggood as well. I'm gonna put a link to these down below. I think they're really supposed to be for Axial SCX10, but I think they're probably gonna fit this too. And the idea is, is you can mount these at any angle that you like. So you could mount them like this and fit some crazy long shocks or you could fit them this way and have some longer shocks at an angle. I mean, the options with these are pretty much limitless. You can kind of put the shocks exactly where you want them. So what I'm thinking is getting some longer shocks 
and just turning this into some sort of a twist off rig that's got like a crazy amount of axle articulation. Have it so that we've got a crazy amount of flex, we've got the portal axles, these tyres that it comes with are actually crazy gripping, they're quite big as well. If you put these next to the TRX4 tyres, look at the size difference, I think these are probably 2.2s and these are 1.9s. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments down below if, if you think that's going to be a good project, making this the ultimate crawler. Anywho, enough waffle, let's get the motor in. So the transmission comes out with just these four screws under here. So if we have a look in here, this is actually a steel drive shaft. We've got a slipper clutch there. Look at these drive shafts, guys. So motor in, pinion gear on, and then we need to set the mesh and tighten up the motor. Now, when you're setting up the mesh, you want to make sure that you get the pinion as close to this spur gear as possible, but make sure there's still a little bit of backlash, a little bit of play. Because otherwise, if you've got that forced on there, you're going to be robbing power away from the motor, everything's going to get warm, and you're going to ruin all your bearings and motor and everything else. So next, we've got to fit the radio gear. So, getting there, we're nearly done, we've just got to do a little bit of soldering, bolt the bumpers on and the wheels, and it should be almost ready to go. And then we're going to do a body shell in a different video, because I've still got to buy a body for it. But I'm going to direct solder these ESC wires directly to the motor. If I use these wires that came with it, it's just going to be a load of flappy wires everywhere. And then also, for the connector here, because most of my batteries run on these XT90 connectors, I'm going to solder an XT90 onto there. Guys, the moment of truth. So radio on, plug him in. Oh, steering. Yes. We got power. We got steering. And luckily, that servo horn looks like I guessed right and it looks perfectly straight. So we can go ahead and just nip it up. So next, we've just got to stick the wheels on and then we can test it out. Body-wise, guys, let me know in the comments what body do you want to see on this? I like the Chevy C10s, but I've already got a load of them, so recommend me something else. Let me know in the comments down below. All right, here we go, first drive. Oh, and it's lovely and smooth. Oh, we've got a fair bit of flex. Not a, well, not bad. I've set up a little obstacle track here. So the turning circle, check that out guys. The turning circle is insane. Insanely good, shall I say, not insanely bad. All right, let's see if we, if we can crush some cars. Look at that diff clearance, guys. The amount of diff clearance this thing's got is insane. With the portal axles and the bigger wheels than normal. I mean, that's just crazy. Look at that, it's just getting over there. First attempt, with no issues whatsoever. Oh, poor infraction wing. Let's try a different approach. I mean, look at it, it doesn't matter what angle you face at it, it's just going over. What? Guys, these tires have got an insane amount of grip to them. They've really got a nice soft compound to them, and that is good. Look at it, it's just going. What? So far, super happy with this. And just check out that diff clearance. I mean, that is insane. Look at that, that's three fingers worth. So body-wise, guys, as I said, I'm not sure. This is a Toyota Hilux one. It's a bit beat up, this one. I made it that way. Ford Raptor, maybe, possibly. Mm, nah. I mean, my favourite one is the C10 body. This one here is painted by Johnny Rain's Custom RC, so go and check out his channel. But I'm definitely not going to put this body on it because I don't want to harm it. I've drilled this one out to fit the TRX4, and this one's more of a shelf queen. I don't want to put it onto a general purpose basher and then ruin it. So a quick look on the Proline website. I do like the Dodge Power Wagon, but I'm not sure if the wheels are going to fit. It looks like the arches. They're kind of like fairly small. Those wheels are big, so maybe it won't work. But I might order this body anyway to put on something else. I've always had my eye on it. So here's my all-time favourite, but I think we're going to go with something different because I've already got a few of them. 
I've got one there, got one there, another one up there, look. So that's the highest it can be. So if I put a pickup body on here, it's going to be perfect. If I put a van back on there, it's going to be up here somewhere. And I'm going to have to find some different posts. I've already got the Gladiator. And that one does look pretty cool, but I don't need another one. So, I don't know, guys. Let me know. What do you think? So we've got all that lot coming up in an upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe and smash the bell so you don't miss it. And also, don't forget, there's going to be a link to all of this stuff that I use. The car, the batteries, the servos, the radio blah 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 waffle 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 link to all of that down below